Hey, Pat. Okay, now I'm up. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. We're in pretty good shape, I guess, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, what, what, what we are. Yeah, I went through everything, and uh, it looks great. So nice to see those letters, too. I love it. Yeah. Looks like Susan's here. Okay. Hi, Susan. Oh, maybe she's muted. Hey. How's, your, how's the grandkids and everything? Everybody's good and healthy, knock on wood. Good. Yeah, yeah us too. Not a bit kind of neurotic about the whole thing. I'm, me, not so much. So she's been, well, Bill's on first aid, so she gets nervous with him being on first I get it, you know? My daughter just went back to first aid last week. She's, she's 19, she's an EMT, and uh, oh, she's done with college for the first semester. I'm like, okay, I guess you're going back. Yeah. Well, they're talking about opening up schools in September, according to what Murphy. Yes, I can. Okay, good. And I have restarted the recording of the meeting. Okay. Good evening. The Middletown Township Public Library is a civic institution that provides materials, ideas, information, technology, and cultural opportunities to enrich, empower, and educate. The May 20, 2020 meeting of the Middletown Public Library Board of Trustees is called to order. Adequate notice of this meeting was published in the Two River Times on December 19, 2019, and posted on the library website, library social media platforms, <coughs> town with the Two River Times for informational purposes on Friday, May 15, 2020, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and Assembly Number 3850, State of New Jersey, 219th Legislature, which allows public bodies to conduct meetings and provide notice by electronic meet, meet, means during periods of emergency. Roll call. Mr. Bucko. Here. Ms. Schnell. Here. Ms. Carillas? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mr. Van Nest? Here. Mr. Ferry? He's here. Mm -hmm. He just is not, he's not able to speak. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Fox? Here. Ms. Burson? And Mr. Rentschler. Also present is Mr. McCumber, Richard McCumber from McCumber and McCumber. Here. Ms. Anderson and Ms. Latona. Um, salute to the flag. It's up to you guys. Why don't we just do it together? Let me do it? Sure. Okay. This is a test. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The flag. Of, of the United, United States, States of, America, of America, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Good job. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, I think Matt is having trouble um, being with, with, with his microphone. Matt, there is a chat feature if you need to ask questions, if you can't speak. Yeah, we can't hear you. Okay. If he's on a computer at the bottom of the computer on the left, there's something that turns the sound on. Yeah, if he clicks the unmute. Or that too. Yeah. Also at the bottom of the screen, if you take a look, there's a button that says lists number of participants and there's a chat function there. You can click on that and you can type messages for everybody to see. Perfect. I clicked on mute, not working. 
I'll keep the Zoom chat open. So if there's anything, Matt, you want to communicate, I can be. Well, the, the other thing, somebody could dial him on their uh, uh, phone, so he could hear and he could be heard. Right. Uh, Jim, you're muted. Oh, can can you hear us, Matt? Yes. Okay, I um, guess we'll go to the agenda. Uh, the first item on the agenda, number three, I'll defer to Mr. Phelan. Thank you. Uh, so we, we have is we have a, uh, I'm also a member of the personnel committee. Uh, as you know, the personnel committee advises the board of trustees on matters pertaining to uh, personnel administration, staffing, and benefits. Specifically, the committee provides overall policy guidance for personnel matters in the library, review personnel policies as needed, uh, submit for approval recommendations on personnel policy that matters to the board of trustees. They provide policy advice to the library director when requested in the areas of employee relations, benefit, training, compensation, recruitment, and retention. Uh, we review jo staff job descriptions, and we review wage and salary ranges and benefits. Uh, there was a meeting of the personnel committee that occurred on February 5th, 2020. Uh, the members of the personnel were all present as well as the uh, director. Uh, the only existing uh, non-union employee compensation that was discussed was uh, Wendy Latona, the secretary to the board of trustees and a valued library employee since January 4th, 2010. Uh, the employee has been given a appropriate notice uh, that this discussion would occur. Uh, the board took into consideration the self-report of the employee's duties and responsibilities as well as the review, recommendation, and request of the library director. Uh, we also reviewed wage and salary ranges and benefits for the position, as well as the history of the employee's compensation. Uh, finally, we considered the fiscal implications uh, and what would be in line with all non-union uh, township employees. And uh, at the conclusion, the personnel committee recommends that the board adopt proposed resolution 2020-12 to confer a 2% raise retroactive to January 1st, 2020 for Wendy Latona with gratitude for her hard work. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, and uh, at that point, I would... Uh, Just before you do, uh, is Mr. Bucko uh, turning the chair of the meeting over to you? Yes. Okay, Mr. Buckeye, you agree? Yes. Thank you. So uh, with that item, uh, with the uh, recommendation from the personnel committee, uh, do I have a motion to adopt resolution 2020-12 with a 2% raise? Motion. And uh, do I have a second? Second. Uh, can I have- Would you like yeah, would anybody like to comment? Okay. Uh, can we have a, uh, a vote then, please? Yes. Mr. Bucko? Thane. Ms. Schnell? Yes. Ms. Carillos? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Van Nest? Abstain. Mr. Ferry? He's giving a thumbs up. I assume that's a yes. Do you give us a thumbs up? All right, that's a yes for Mr. Ferry. Ms. Fox? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, 
Next item on the agenda, approval of the February 18th regular session minutes. Um, <clears throat> I only do have uh, one correction in there on the last page, uh, just the last, uh, the spelling of my last name, there's, uh, there's an F after the C. But other than that, um, can I get a motion to accept the February minutes with the correction? I move. Second. Do you want to roll call, Mr. Bucko? Yes. Uh, yes. Mr. Bucko? Yes. Ms. Chanel? Yes. Ms. Carrillos? Sorry. Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Van Nest? Yes. Mr. Ferry? He's giving a thumbs up. That's a yes. <laughs> He's also I, typing, just for the record, he is typing in the chat, the uh, chat. The, his vote. Yep. I, I don't believe Mr. Ferry was at the February meeting. So I believe he'd have to abstain. That's correct. Yeah. OK. Uh, Ms. Fox? Yes. Thank you. Next item uh, is the funny. Oh, do you want to take the? Uh, that's fine. Whatever if you want, Wendy. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. No, no go ahead, Mr. Bucko. It's fine. <laughs> uh, financial reports. Uh, we have the list of our voucher for 2020, the overview of the checks, and there was a 2019-2020 financial report and a financial statement of assets for the last couple months. Heather, can you give us a broad picture as to uh, what, what the finances of the library are looking like with the effect of uh, COVID-19? Are we under budget, over budget? It's, I imagine we Sure, we're, we're under budget in, in many of our lines because we had to stop buying books. They weren't being shipped to New Jersey. So in the next few months, you'll, you'll see them bump back up to, to normal. We're, we're under budget in salary because we didn't hire those three part-time people um, that we had agreed to hire at last meeting. We put that on hold because of the virus. Um, so we are under budget. And even with spending money on some of the COVID stuff, we're still in really good shape. And some of the COVID stuff can also go back to the township in case they get reimbursed for any COVID expenses. So the township has been, uh, we've been paying for it, but they, they have been keeping track of all those expenses for the library as well. Good. Just as um, an aside, uh, Mr. Mr. President, um, we, we will, we have uh, two sources of funding. So when we're talking about the supplies and things that the library has purchased, the town will seek reimbursement for them as well. Okay, that's good to know. Um, any idea just... Um... Real quick, Heather, could you let, um, or whoever is in charge of this meeting, Matt um, left to try to come back in. He's in the waiting room, if you could try to let him back in. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, only because, well, maybe I'll get to where it comes to the reports. I'll ask my questions on the um, on the new hirees and stuff, and where where kind of we just stand and where the township is going. But well, I think that'll be more appropriate for uh, once we get into that. I I also will say we're obviously down in our programming line, and that's probably not coming back this year. Um, I mm -hmm. don't foresee us having paid. Um, programs like performers and stuff coming in anytime soon. Um, and also in our museum passes, we stopped those because there was no sense buying more museum passes when people couldn't use the museums. So we are, we're definitely under budget right now. All right, with that, if there are no other questions, if I could please get a motion to accept the, I guess the March and April uh, financials for the library. Move. Second. And if we could do the roll call, please. Mr. Bucko? Yes. 
Ms. Chanel? Yes. Ms. Carillos? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Mr. Van Nest? Yes. Mr. Ferry? Abstain. Ms. Fox? Yes. Thank you. Um, next item, the correspondences. Um, there's quite a lot and, um, you know, my only comment, I mean, excellent work um, by all staff and um, in these trying times, it is nice to hear uh, good news and, and accolades and um, so uh, the only thing that I would request, and uh, if Mr. McCumber, I don't know what, where we stand on um, any legal grounds is when we do get these correspondences, um, not knowing whether or not that these packets are subject to open public meeting, uh, the OPA requests, whether or not uh, we can um, just the civilians email addresses if they could be blacked out instead of the public email addresses. Um, that was just something I noticed. Um, and if they can't, that's fine. I just. I, th I think um, I hadn't thought about it, but I have no problem blocking it out. And if somebody wants to press us, then we'll rule on you know a particular letter or particular item of correspondence. <clears throat> And I just want, I'm just talking about a patron who sends an email or someone else who hosted a program. I'm not saying that we block out the library employees emails or who it was sent to. Just, I think more for privacy purposes for uh, the patrons. Um, Good idea. In, in so doing, then we have to do it on all the correspondence, you know, from, you know, from patrons of the library. In other words, if somebody writes a very wonderful letter, it's going to be blocked out. And if somebody writes a letter that's not so wonderful, that similarly would have to be blocked out. Yes. Mr. Bucko? Yes. In the past, we've always given the, um, the board the um, emails as is. And then if they're ever opened, um, the township clerk redacts the uh, personal information. So the only parties that see that is the board of trustees. Oh, okay. No, that's fine then. Then we could leave it as is. And I didn't know if these were put up on our website as part of the packets for our meetings coming up. So, uh, and if that's how it is, then that's perfect. Then we can leave it as is then. We only post the agenda. Oh, okay. Also, we had one additional correspondence yesterday. We had Ms. Burson's uh, resignation letter. Would you like me to read that? You do not um, have a copy of it because it came <clears> in yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna just mention that in my report that she has okay. resigned. Um, and then I was going to ask that you share it with the rest of the board. Um, either after this meeting or tomorrow, um, but it's a good segue into the reports. Um, regretfully, we did receive um, a letter of resignation on Monday from our secretary, uh, Tara Burson, uh, effective immediately to, um, uh, to resign from the board. Um, she also is, um, excuse me, she was also our secretary um, so, uh, we will have a vacancy that we, we will need to fill, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and, um, probably we'll discuss that more at the next meeting. This kind of came at the last minute. So, um, but that's, uh, we wish her well, uh, thankfully for us, she is staying local, um, and she still offered to be a part of our hundred year celebration. Um, she was very involved uh, with the township when the township did the 350, 350 year celebration of the township. So uh, having her around uh, still uh, will be a great asset. And uh, I would just like to thank her for all her years of service uh, on the library board and to the township and to the residents of Middletown. Um, and her absence will be sorely missed. Mr. Buck, I, I don't know what the uh, practice of the board is. Uh, do you formally, um, you know, acknowledge and accept the resignation as a motion, or do you just, um, you know, enter it into the record? 
we just enter it into the record and then um, that's fine. Yeah, and then Wendy will alert the township clerk and then uh, the, who will in turn alert the township committee and then they'll appoint a new, uh, a new representative to fill that particular seat. Thank you. Um, uh, finance, we kind of spoke about and just personnel. Um, so obviously there's no, uh, there was no finance or personnel committee meeting, but uh, Heather, you kind of touched on it a little bit. And I just wanted to know from you is, where are you hearing from the township of when they would start opening up again, possibility of uh, hiring again? I know a lot of government entities are on a hire freeze right now. Do they have an end date to that or is it still, um, um, or I don't know I'm, if Jim can answer to that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're under official hiring freeze. Uh, the, I did decide to rescind the three. We had two job offers out there for the part-time positions that we had offered, and I did rescind those because of the um, virus. Mm -hmm. And we never interviewed for the third position, so that's just on hold for right now. Okay. I think libraries are going to be a little bit different than the township. Um, they will probably be start staffing up um, and gearing up to staff up more fully, uh, I think around June 1st, is that correct, Jim? Yes, we uh, well, discussed that, it's Pat. Um, we discussed that at the last, and, and announced it actually, at the last Township Committee meeting, and the mayor said he was gonna start to open up Town Hall on June 1st. Right. Um, library- Heather, if I, if I could. Right now, we are, we are still kind of under a hiring freeze because we can't get new employment physicals done. Correct. So if so, if there was an emergency hire that we absolutely needed, we could probably make arrangements to have them go someplace to get a physical. But our normal place to go, Meridian Occupational Health, is not doing new employment physicals right now. Okay. So that that would jam it up a little bit. But I know the person that you've gone from temp to, to perm uh, was already here, so she already had her physical. Right. Answer. That that's why we did that because it would make life much easier. Um, so. As far as these three employees, I see for the foreseeable future it being on hold. Um, if I'm not opened up fully to the staff, if, you know, six days a week back to normal hours, that's going to impact the staff that we needed. So I don't anticipate bringing them on board anytime soon. Of course, if I did see that, I would talk to you um, about about where we are in with that. Um, Again, like I said, if we're not programming and we're not fully allowing people into the building, it's really going to impact what we need right now. Great. Uh, the director's report, uh, Heather, if you just, I know, was very, very detailed and um, Rather than read through it, I just, is there anyone have any questions maybe for Heather? Heather, if you just wanna maybe do some high, highlight points, just a couple bullet points on that. Sure. On the um, for April. The, the staff has really been working a lot at home. I have to give them a lot of kudos. They have found ways to uh, reinvent library services. A lot, of, a lot of the staff are working on how-to videos for our public, getting our virtual stuff out there. And even some of our staff, are, um, for example, we have a part-time library assistant who her job is circulation and to put books away. So right now she's not doing much in the library. I'm, I'm sorry, at home, which is in the library, she does her job. So she took on kind of an independent project. She decided to do research on women's rights um, and find out all our resources in the library and make like a book list for us. So when we come back, we can pull these books, have some nice displays. She, she did an in-depth dive into that. And I thought that was really fantastic that she took on that initiative. Um, we've been very busy with our virtual services and our social media. We have been very busy going through the stacks and cleaning up the stacks, which means we're weeding what we don't need, um, condensing books processing materials. So the staff has been very busy. They've been doing webinars. Um, and even now we've had chance to work on the building since we haven't had anyone in there. So we were able to get some of the light fixtures done we needed to get done. 
Um, John and Ed, our maintenance people, have been fantastic. They are still in the buildings every day, keeping them clean for us. I had a staff member tell me today she actually felt safe um, coming back to work. She was said that she has no fears coming back to work with the building. We've been putting up our plastic shields on the counters. We've been getting ready for in case we do let customers back in. We have had staff move around so we can make them sure they're six feet apart. So we've been keeping very, very busy. And um, I think it's, it's been a good time for everyone to get some other projects that we've been working on. Very good, thank you, Heather. And um, you know, I, I'm going to save my my sentiments and comments for the good of the order. Uh, old business, I guess. The discussion of the resolution, the update on the New Jersey construction bond. Okay, so as you know, that was moved to June. The deadline is June fifth. I talked with our architect firm yesterday, and we are in good shape to put in for this for this construction bond. I asked him if a lot of people have dropped out because maybe some libraries are kind of hurting financially. He said, no, more are putting in for it. So um, it is very competitive, but I feel like we're in very good shape for it. I have, I plan to finish it up next week with the architect firm, and then I will be submitting it before June 5th. Uh, we, we have, I've given you lots of documentation one of the things I do want to talk to you about um, is the cost, which I am looking at. It's basically a couple pages in. It's the seventh page in, and it says Middletown Library Renovation Project. It's a, sp it's a spreadsheet, and you can see at the bottom right-hand corner the total estimated cost for all projected but for the proposed project is 3205813 So we would be putting in half of that money. Um, and that covers the cost of replacing the three air conditioned HVAC units we still have to replace on the roof. That covers fixing the roof and giving us the 25 year warranty. That also covers the idea of a new um, internal renovation of pieces of the library, of parts of the library, where we'd make a history room, which is included in your report, the schematics. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we really kind of concentrated on at this point was the fact that social distancing is probably going to be a norm of the future. So this proposed history room gives us more space in the library for customers to spread out. Um, it also would be able to move things around with the tables for, for programming in the future. It adds a second fireplace so people, again, are not all sitting around that one fireplace. It brings in our museum pieces we talked about to try to get exhibits out there. And it's a way for us to, uh, I think, better use the space. So that's kind of where we are with it. This is great. I just, Heather, I just had one question. Um, on that, on just the proposed project page where it says roof HVAC equipment replacement for line of 785.5. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, is that including, because it was my understanding that, you know, we, we essentially reserved the $300,000 in January for the three new HVACs where the biggest one would cost 90 to 100,000. Um, is this including from the direct install as well? The other two, I, I just, um, I guess just more clarity as to what roof HVAC equipment replacement that is for. No, I don't have the answer to that. So I will talk to Kurt tomorrow. And can I email the board that answer? Yeah, I'd be fine with that if everyone else is. Okay. Um, I do know that it's not just the three HVACs that have to be replaced. There's a, there's a part above Andy's computer room that has to be replaced as well uh, because we had problems with overheating. Um, I will have to look at that further about that cost. I don't know, Wendy, if you have any insight on that cost. 
not the cost, but the, um, the repair for above and in Andes that had to do with the, um, I believe that had to do with Red Hawk with um, the sensors and for the um, sprinkler system, okay. system and that was affected. So that's been repaired already. Um, the HVACs that are being um, replaced up on the roof, the three HVACs that are being replaced on the roof um, that you're going out for the grant for, um, they have nothing to do anymore with the uh, direct install program. They, they don't uh, qualify for any of those, uh, a part of that grant. Uh, only the ones that we did just do um, qualified. So right. this, these are, this would be a brand new um, RFP that would go out. If we, if we were to get the grant, uh, we would have to go out for, um, for an RFP uh, for those services. Right. Uh, so, um, Wendy, uh, not Wendy, uh, Heather, my next question is, though, is if we, because I, I know we've been having a kind of had conversations about with the HVAC system, if we go out to bid now for those and get them replaced, can we be reimbursed with the grant or do we have to wait for the approval or denial of the grant? We have to wait for the approval or denial of the grant. Okay. And when I talked to Kurt about that, um, I asked him how long they're going to last. And he seemed to think we'll be okay through the summer. Um, there are a bunch of reports in here um, about what they found. Um, and I'm trying to go through that. So we will find out in September if we got the grant or not. Okay. Then I, I would just want to make sure then... Um, and if you can double check with Colleen, then worst case, we do get the denial um, of the grant. And then we choose to go out to bid in, let's say, October. And, you know, they don't finish till January, February, that we're still okay with that uh, resolution that we did in the beginning of the year of the 300000 Yes, uh, we'll have to check on that. Yep. If you could just check with Colleen on that, um, yep. just to make sure that does it have to be expended and cleared or as long as it's encumbered within this calendar year, we'll be fine. Yeah. I am, I am wondering about that number myself now that you brought it up. Um, so I would definitely would call him first thing tomorrow and figure out what that number came from. He did, he did put some other number in that was not correct that we caught some, that could be the case. So. Okay. Heather. Yes. I know that I know that you've been, we've been talking, theorizing with Tony Mercantante about um, coronavirus proofing, you know, putting a, a drive-through window in. Has, yes. that gone, has that gone any further? And would that, would that interfere with the history room or, I mean? Let me fill the board in. Um, as Jim mentioned previously, there are some monies coming from the county and from FEMA for COVID related expenses. And one of the things we talked about was, you know, if when this happens again, how do we make sure we can continue services in the future? And you know, Tony Maricante said, you know, kind of think outside the box. So I suggested, you know, if we had had a drive up window at the library, we probably could have done the whole curbside thing from the very beginning. And we would be able to share it with the town as well so that people could come up and have town business done as well. Um, so Tony and I have been talking about that with Jim. Um, so it's just a theory at this point. It's just, but I did talk to Kurt yesterday, the architect on, uh, about this. If it does not impact this grant at all, it would not impact the history room at all. And matter of fact, he knew where it would go before I even opened my mouth. He goes, I know you're building so well. He goes, the, the technical processing area would be perfect for it. So um, it's already almost perfect for it. Um, so it does not affect this, does not affect the history room. It might affect speed bumps we're putting in, very minor, but that's it. Um, so if that goes forward with Tony, Maricante, and the other money, of course, we'll come back to, and talk about that. But right now, we're just all in theory and talking about it. Yeah, good. I, I, just, I just wanted to be sure that the spot where the history room was wouldn't be the spot for a drive Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, all right, good, thanks. Uh, Heather, just because that you mentioned the speed bumps, those are like quote unquote portable ones that they're putting in, mm, or no. is it a built up like? It's gonna. They're they're allowing us to do built up ones there. Okay. But um, 
Well, we should, it's asphalt, so it's easy to be removed. Right. And it might not, in, if we even did this drive through in, in the near, in the future, it might only be one that has to be taken out. It would not really impact that. And we are working on the speed bumps, by the way. <laughs> COVID <laughs> likes to mess with things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, don't, don't we all? Doesn't it mess with a lot of things? Um, okay. So the... Uh, Heather, I, you know, I, this hasn't been reviewed by the Finance Committee. I mean, I, I, none of this proposal. I, I, know, I see that it's dated May 4th. I, you know, I have some concerns about the dollar amount of the project and just that it's, you know, this is $3 million that we're, we're talking about. And I understand that we're looking to obtain a grant, a grant for a large portion of it. And certain of this is contingent upon us getting the approval and, and an award of a grant from the state. But I, you know, I have serious reservations about some of this stuff. And I know that we haven't talked about some of these items before, like the boilers, you know, We've, you've got a line item here on this page for $235,000. Uh, you know, before I'd feel comfortable, you know, going forward with this, I, I'd like to see the full reports. And I, you know, I'm not sure that you know, it's appropriate for us to necessarily submit this, you know, based upon these numbers. That's a, that's a lot of money. I mean, when we were talking before, we were talking, we were saying, Maybe we'll have uh, three hundred thousand in reserves, and that you know we're maybe counting on some outside sources uh, as of yet to be disclosed that would result in maybe a million dollars that we would then budget five hundred thousand of that towards the construction, so that we were thinking you know about eight hundred thousand dollars would be going in, but you know if we're in for half of this, you know we're talking about one point five million dollars. That's a lot of money to come up with. I mean, when we're looking at third quarter revenues in township uh, that are going to be, you know, pretty pretty abysmal. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, you know, I understand you, you know, you have the there's the, there's a deadline of June fourth to to submit this, and I'm look, I, I'm fine with submitting this from you to the for an application, but I'm I'm. I'll, I'll put it on the record, I'm not okay with these numbers as is. Uh, and I understand it would go out to bid for this, but there's a lot of stuff in here that was not discussed that was, uh, you know, I'm not sure that we necessarily need. I mean, we would have to see the reports and evaluate a lot of this stuff. So we, we Rob, would... what I can do um, is tomorrow I'm going to be in the library and I'm working with Margaret to fill in the numbers. Um, and I can have Kurt meet with the finance committee via Zoom to go over everything. Because I'm looking at this and, you know, frankly, I mean, I'm adding the numbers in the right hand column and they don't even add up. Okay. I will um, call Kurt tomorrow and I'll set up a Zoom meeting if you guys can, if the finance committee can meet. We, we can do that and and Heather I mean correct me if I'm wrong and Rob I you know like I said when I saw that 785 for the new HVACs that kind of jumped out at me um, and you're right there are, were some things on here that we never then necessarily discuss going forward but was it also though it was my understanding that when we discussed about this early on they had just come out with what would be approved in this grant or they weren't sure yet. So I don't know to me and Heather, please, uh, if I'm wrong, that it, a lot of these things like the boiler, like interior specialty fixtures and stuff where maybe when we had the discussion early on, it was not going to be covered in part of this grant. And now that it could be, kind of tack it on to see if we get it. I don't, I, I don't know if that was the I, I don't know how the answer to that bell so yeah, I want to speculate know if that, if that yeah if that was the I, I agree with Rob that at this point um that we should get um Kurt to come in and have a meeting but we're gonna have to set up quickly so is it possible if uh, look I'm listen we could probably have it quickly especially if it's by zoom right um but I think for purposes of the meeting for the board's approval 
to go forward for, like Rob said, for you to submit this to, to the state, because if we submit this to the state and they approve it, I mean, we're not binded that we have to do every single thing that we submitted, correct? Um, I have to go back and read. We would, we would have to sign stuff for it, obviously. Um, I would have to go back and read what the binding language is. It might be in the frequently asked questions that you may have some of them. Uh, I don't know that. So I, I honestly think, Bill, that um, we need to get the answers that the board has questions to. Yeah, I, I, I'm not in a position to be able to commit to spending $3 million. On the boards. I mean, I understand it's going to be half 1.5 potentially, but you know, that's a that's that's a big commitment that we're talking about here, and we don't know what our finances are going to be next year. Here is here is something I do know. Um, I asked the state librarian about the twenty percent give back to the town. If there's if we if we don't spend all our money and there's money left over, um, you know, if you go pa past that twenty percent cap, then the ta the town can get it back for tax relief purposes. So I asked the state librarian about a week ago, I said, this is a very extraordinary year and many of us may not spend our budgets out like we had presumed. Is there gonna be any exemptions? So next year when this money comes back, people don't go, oh, all, all that money's sitting there. Well, we haven't been able to order books for six months. So it really is gonna impact, you know, how much money is sitting there. There is gonna probably be no exemption still. So basically, I'm not saying to spend it just to spend it, but I'm also saying that if we start, you know, we'll start adding adding to that pot, we it will be going back um, to the township for tax related purposes. I may I just ask a question, please? Yeah. Um, what is the, the the new boiler? Six of them, right? uh at thirty nine thousand dollars each what is that something that is a necessary item i honestly have to say no i don't know why that's in there this is why i i am okay I so look we, we have a plan you're gonna uh, call the zoom you know you're gonna call a zoom meeting with the finance you all can go through those numbers Mm -hmm. um, perhaps we can we do something vote by email once those numbers are straightened out so you can still meet the deadline of June 4th. That's what I would ask to, uh, if we could possibly do. Could we table this resolution until we talk more about the numbers? Mm -hmm. Council, yes, can I we, can we uh, just vote by email for this resolution or do we need to have another quote unquote public meeting to approve this or if we approve it with the stipulation that once the finance committee meets and it's resubmitted that we can uh, vote by email. I would like to know what, what we'd be voting on with very, with specificity. Um, right, though, but to, Mr. Buck, a respectful recommendation. You know, this is a substantial dollar item and we're filing an application um, it certainly can't hurt if the board would have a special meeting scheduled to just go through that one item, uh, resolve some of the questions that various board members and the director have asked. Um, yes, I, I have questions. Everybody can feel comfortable when we submit the application. Yes, it's a good application. We understand it and we agree with it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. when, Heather, when does the uh, application have to go in? It has to go in June 5th, so we have two weeks. Tomorrow I will contact DMR and set up the meeting, the separate meeting with the Finances Committee via Zoom. Um, and then at that point, the Finance Committee will be able to ask their questions. They can then discuss and make a recommendation back to us, uh, to the board, for a special meeting for exactly what we will be, what the board would be voting for. So I'm, I'm looking at the calendar either June 2nd or 3rd. 
which is a Tuesday or a Wednesday? Uh, the two, if you could do the Tuesday, because I'm going to need time to get this in. I, I need hours a day to get this in. This is right. not just pick, push a button. What, why can't we try to do it one day next week? Or, or then we do maybe the 28th, I'm just thinking. Um, Would the finance committee be available for Tuesday for a meeting since Monday is Memorial Day? I am. Um, Yes, I am. Well, if it's in the evening, like seven o'clock, you know, I, I, I would like to get all of the attachments to this report. I mean, I'm sure that you're, this is. I got some more stuff yesterday, Rob. So I will um, send it out tomorrow morning. Okay. I may have to do a couple separate emails, but I'll send out everything I have. That's fine. If we could do maybe the 26th for the finance committee meeting at seven o'clock, does that work for uh, you know, Pat and Rob? I know you guys are the ones that are here that are on the finance committee. Works for me, Bob. I'm, I'm fine. I can do it. Okay. So Great. Heather, it's, and that then I'll let John hours, know. Um, um, yeah, I'll let John know um, that we'll, we will have a Zoom finance meeting on May 26th at um, 7? 7 p.m. And then we will hold a special meeting on June 2nd okay. at 7 o'clock via Zoom uh, to approve Resolution 2020-14. Does that give you enough time, Heather? I mean, it I does. I'm, I, I am almost done with everything I have to do on my end. Um, so that gives me plenty of time. Thank you. I appreciate um, your patience with this. I also want to say, you know, if, if after the numbers aren't adding up, then we don't have to have, you know, I'm not going to spend the money willy nilly. So. Heather, I think that the one thing that's a, a bit troubling when it comes to the money amount, um, especially speaking to Bob's concerns, is the unpredictability of next year. Right. Um, you know, we don't know what revenues are going to be. Um, we're hopeful on what they're going to be, but there's nothing that's telling us anything because it depends on when everything opens up. And I guess that leads um, a question for you with this opening, which is going to relate to, you know, everything else that follows. Does the library sort of work with the schools on timing? Is, does the library, would they make it a point to open prior to the schools, if possible. I mean, I know it all depends on the governor, so I understand that. But I'm thinking that the schools and the library should sort of work together. Well, we did when we closed. When they closed, we closed right away because we were concerned about kids being left in the library. Right. Um, I, I suspect if the libraries are open to, if we're able to open this summer, we're going to regardless if the schools open or not. Okay. If it comes down to the schools still being closed in the fall, I think we, we would have to be very, we would have to really make sure our unintended children policies are enforced. Correct. Because I would not want to have to close down the library for the whole community if we don't have to. I mean, this, this time around we did, right. but it, if it's just because the schools are closed, I don't necessarily want to have to close down a library so the kids aren't coming into the libraries all day. Well, I think the governor is making a strong push right now to get schools open in September. Yes. You know, so unless we hear differently, um, I'm gonna roll with that. Um, so that's just my thoughts about, you know, the $3 million. Um, I think we need to spend what we need to spend, but I don't think we need to overspend on things that perhaps we can work around. Sure. Um, Heather, just a point of clarification, if I can. Yes. The budget next year for the library, the, the amount of money the library is gonna receive is based upon this year's assessments. Yes. Which, which are about to be finalized and are, are up a, a small percentage. So the library budget next year will be up a small percentage from this year. The, the, really, the real worry we would have if, if property values should fall in the, in the, you know, during the recession would be 2022. Right, right. I also, um, 
I'm also going to look for the language about the signing of this because if they come back in September and say you are granted this amount, we would then sign paperwork in October. We wouldn't even start this project until next year after we get through permits and stuff. So I will look into the language about if we are awarded this, you know, can we still pull out by a certain time as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would definitely like to know whether or not we can, you know, like this is broken down into three, you know, separate items. You know, if we submit for all and they award us all, can we say, thank you very much. We're just gonna proceed with one and two. Right. We uh, did decide to submit it as one grant so they can either give us the entire amount or just a portion of the amount. It's paperwork wise, it's much easier. It doesn't mean that we don't have to, we get all the money or, or it's just a paperwork issue. But then, it, but then the way you're describing it, it's their discretion whether or not we, you know, you're submitting for everything and it's up to them whether or not they decide to give us money. They may say, you've applied for one, two, and three. We'll give you money for one and two, but not three. But my concern is, is that if you submit for one, two, and three, and then they say, congratulations, you got the money. And you know, we say, well, now we don't want to do three. Then they say, you can't do that. It was your whole grant, it was one grant. And so my thinking you know, is perhaps you should investigate and consider should we do separate grants if necessary, even if it's duplicative paperwork? I, I, you know, that may be a better item to a better manner to proceed doing it separately. And I think, you know, we should look into that and we should have an answer. Yeah. And I did talk with the architect about that, the consulting firm, and they suggested doing it as one, but I will revisit that. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, we paid a lot of money to that architect for the, for the proposal, right? So they should be able to answer mm -hmm. some of these questions and you know I, I, just also, I mean also Rob just um, you know sometimes when these proposals go in um, you know you kind of put more than what you initially would want with the understanding you know with going in there thinking that okay they're gonna say well we can approve this but you got to get rid of you got to get rid of something like we can approve you for two-thirds of what you want but you got to get rid of a third and then yeah. you can come back and say, oh, okay, well, we'll get rid of this. That's fine. Because clearly, I mean, for our purposes, the roof and, and the history room were a top, priori were top priority in projects. It was so. the, but Bill, I, I thought it was the roof and the HVACs. Oh, well, that, oh the, yeah, the roof and the HVACs. And um, <clears throat> sorry, thank you, uh, Heather. But yeah, look, I think we'll get more, uh, we'll get more answers on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, and then Heather, if you don't mind just sending a confirmation to Pat, myself, Rob, and John uh, for that meeting. Okay. Yep. I'll take care uh, of that. And with the Zoom link and everything. And then um, we'll be able to report back. And uh, if, uh, you or Wendy, um, if you could just please um, submit the notice to the papers for our special meeting for June 2nd. Okay. Okay. Um, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Mr. McCumber, um, do we need to do any formal vote to table resolution 2020-14 or can we proceed? I, my rec recommendation would be do a formal vote. You can never get in trouble doing a formal vote. And then I think secondly, there should be a motion for a special meeting on June 2nd. That should be a second formal vote. Okay. So I will make the motion to table resolution 2020-14. And can I get a second, please? I second that motion. Mr. Buckel? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes, table. Ms. Schnell? Yes. Ms. Carillos? Yes. Mr. Ferry? Yes. Ms. Fox? Yes, the table. And Mr. Van Ness? Yes. Thank you. And then I would uh, move a resolution to schedule a special meeting for Tuesday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Can I get a second? second? I second that motion. 
Roll call. Mr. Bartel? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Ms. Schnell? Yes. Ms. Carillos? Yes. Mr. Ferry? Yes. Ms. Fox? Yes. And Mr. Van Ness? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, resolution 2020-2015. Excuse me. Um, uh, our, the library um, had received a very uh, generous donation uh, from a former patron of ours uh, who tragically passed away a few years ago. Marilyn Pradi. Um, and uh, the Middletown Library was a benefactor, beneficiary of her estate. And a couple weeks ago, the library received a donation from her estate in the amount of $950,000. Um, and uh, I just would like to thank uh, Mr. McCumber uh, for his efforts. Um, it hasn't been quite easy sometimes, but uh, I do appreciate his efforts. And we, of course, would like to thank and honor the memory of Ms. Purdy uh, for her generosity to us. Uh, the library must have been a special place for her. Um, the uh, our council and our director have uh, reached out to Ms. Uh, Perdee's uh, estate attorney to have some biographical information on her. Uh, we are still waiting for that, uh, but we of course would like to honor her and thank her properly uh, for this generous uh, donation to us. Uh, we are very grateful, um, particularly with what we are discussing about spending and re renovating the library. This, um, this definitely would come in handy. Um, now, resolution 2020-15, um, I have the only question I would have now, given that Ms. Burson is no longer um, the secretary. I don't know if myself and another executive board member um, can take all other actions deemed necessary, given that Ms. Burson and I had signed the resolution 2020-13. And the only correction I would make on this resolution um, that Ms. Fox is the secret uh, is the treasurer and Ms. Burson was the I secretary. had corrected it, my revised one that I have in front of me. Okay, but um, Mr. Montgomery, are we able to have another executive board member take the place of the secretary, given that? even though that the sec Ms. Burson and I did sign the 2020-13 resolution? My, my recommendation is in, in all likelihood, the um, isn't the bank opening up a special account for this? Yes, yeah, so that's why we need the signers. So my recommendation would be uh, that um, it be the three remaining. And then if you wanna add somebody else when that uh, position is filled, uh, you can always do another resolution. Okay. And, and the way the this resolution is written, not the bank resolution, but this resolution, it looks like anyone can sign. Now that the bank may resolution, you may want to say two can sign, but uh, you know that's up to the uh, board. The way I read this resolution, any one of the uh, signers, one, any one of these names can sign. Okay. Do we know? Well, I would. Is the other resolution, the one that was formally adopted, does it require two signatures or just one? The 2020-13 resolution, I believe it was the one that you had created. Uh, yeah. It was to, or am I right, Wendy? It was the one that yes. came from- I have it, in, um, I have a copy here, Mr. Buckle, if you want me to read it. No, yeah, so if you don't mind, please, just- um, 
it just requires one signature? Um, it says resolve the trustees of the free public library of the township of Middletown to agree to and shall by these presents accept a gift from the estate of Marilyn uh, Preeti, who died as a resident of Middletown, New Jersey, um, be it further resolved, the president and secretary of the library respectively are authorized to sign a refunding bond and release in favor of uh, Dana Bennett Esquire and the executress of the estate of Marilyn Preeti deceased and right. to take any and all actions deemed necessary and appropriate by them. Right. Respectfully, all that, all that resolution did authorize the president and the secretary to sign a piece of paper to obtain the money from the uh, state. Now we're talking about a totally different subject, which is the money is going into a bank and who can sign to get the money out of the bank? Who can sign checks? Okay. Uh, we usually have every, um, all the board members on the um, bank to sign the checks. Yeah, any one or is it multiple, like two, any two? Well, we always have every one of the, um, the members. So the president, vice president, secretary or treasurer can sign, but we always require two signatures on a check. Okay, that, that should be set up with the bank. So the bank resolution will say any two of the following individuals. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that because of the, the resignation that we're still okay, we were covered with the previous resolution. So um, with just the, what's just with the change that uh, Wendy had mentioned that she just switched the uh, position yeah, yeah. of the executive board for Tara mm -hmm. and Lindsay, um, yep. but just to remove Miss Burson from this resolution. Okay. I, I offer this resolution as amended. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Was that you, Miss Carillas? It was Pat. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I have my screen is circling and I can't see anyone. My brain's been circling, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Bucko. Yes. Mr. Phelan. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Schnell. Yes. Ms. Carlos. Yes. Mr. Ferry. Yes. Ms. Fox. Yes. Mr. Van Est. Yes. And Mr. Bucko, for, um, since Ms. Person isn't here, we need a pro temp secretary for this evening so that we can have the resolutions um, signed. And then the minutes then when they're done. Okay, can I be that and I can stop by or the, could it be me or does it have to be someone else? Respectfully, I'd suggest it be someone other than the uh, president. I okay. think, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can appoint someone. Lindsay. I'm gonna be at New Mammoth tomorrow, so I could you know, stop by. So okay, I, yeah, Mr. Ferry could be, uh, uh, I will appoint Mr. Ferry as the pro temp. temporary pro temp secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Sure thing. Matt, tomorrow when you get there, all the doors are locked. If you go to the back door of the staff entrance where the patio cover is, mm -hmm. and you call me, we can then get you into the building. Got you. What time are you there? To I'm from? there all day tomorrow, so I'll be there until five. All right, I'll be right up the road. I'll stop by when I'm done. Great, and you have my number, I believe, in an email? Yep. Great, thank you. No problem. Okay, um, next item is the approval of the HELP plan. Uh, and I will let Heather um, take on this. I just first want to say I really want to commend uh, Heather for her leadership uh, through this whole crisis um, pandemic, at least at the library. Um, Nothing like uh, baptismal by fire for <laughs> your first year, um, but also with uh, you know uh, with uh, Pat and Jim and the rest of the township committee, um, really uh, the partnership with the library and the township. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why we have been so successful in ensuring the health and safety of our employees 
as well as our residents. And I think this plan, uh, particularly when you look at who was involved uh, in putting this together, it really was a team and group effort. Um, so I do wanna commend you, Heather, and the rest of the staff, you, Wendy, Margaret, and the rest of the library staff, um, you know, Eileen and, and everyone else for uh, really coming together and putting something in place to where we can uh, open back up to the public in a safe way and to where people can be, can feel safe, uh, you know, coming to, uh, coming to our library. Because while, while we're all focused on our physical health, uh, with this pandemic, we also need to keep in mind of our social and emotional and mental health when it comes to this. And um, the library, um, you know, is a sanctuary for a lot of our patrons. And uh, the fact that they haven't been able to come, uh, you know, really does do a number on. So I'm very, very, I was very impressed with this plan. Um, and again, I just want to commend everyone that the entire committee, um, you know, that work group uh, that was on um, for their input. And again, I just want to really commend you, Heather, for your leadership uh, in this and and throughout this whole pandemic, uh, so even so pre so and so post. So Thank you very much. I've had um, tremendous support from the town. The township has been fantastic. I, I am so lucky to work with such great department heads and uh, wonderful people at the town. And the, the, my department heads are fantastic. When I asked them to start doing research for this, they had research done, the librarians and library staff. So of course they researched like crazy. I asked them to research best practices around the country. I even said, look around the world, see what other countries are doing that have already opened up. Um, so this was truly a joint effort from everyone and I do appreciate everyone's input. I also use best practices from um, other plans in New Jersey. We research the CDC. Um, so this is our best guess of what we can do right now. Obviously it's a living plan. It will change as guidelines change. Um, I'm still happy with the recommendation for quarantining items for 72 hours. Some people are saying only 24. 72 hours does not put an extra burden on us and I feel better with that number. And I think the staff will too. So um, my plan is to start next week bringing back some of the materials. So we're gonna be putting out some color-coded bins on certain days so customers can come and toss their items in the bins. We're doing it color-coded uh, and there will be two people sitting out there to kind of help them and monitor. They won't have to touch anything. Um, we're doing it color-coded so there's less touch on our end. We then bring the materials back into our community room and they will sit there for 72 hours before we even process them. So that's the quarantine. And of course, everyone's gonna be using PPE, gloves. We have posters around the library on proper use of taking off the gloves. So that's what we're doing with books. We are hoping to start offering curbside pickup on June 8th as, um, as, as a service for our customers. There is some back and forth about this in the library community. Um, because the governor and his um, ex most recent executive order with the curbside pickup said non-essential retail is allowed to do that. He didn't specifically mention libraries, but he didn't specifically say we couldn't. And when I read the executive order, we meet every criteria that is required for non-essential businesses to do curbside pickup plus, plus more. So uh, my interpretation, and I'm hoping that this is the board's interpretation, is that we can start doing curbside pickup on June 8th. We have a whole plan in place. The, the um, staff is actually very excited about it. Um, it's, it's contactless. We won't be touching the, um, the near, near the customers. We'll be using a container with a sealed bag with their materials, and they just take the bag out like you do for takeout. Um, PPE is all involved, all that stuff. Books will be put on hold, um, so all the customers will have to do is put their stuff on hold on the computer or call us. We pull it for them. They can come and get them. Um, 
according to the governor's reopening plan, libraries are supposed to reopen in stage two. We are not in stage two, but according to his plan, that's a more of going back to like a normal, like museums are opening, libraries are opening. He didn't specifically say that it would be what it would be, but I assume if you're opening a museum, that means people could enter the building. So I think that's what his stage two is for libraries is that people can enter the building, which was my phase three um, in our plan. No, so that's I'm great. sure and I have lots of questions. Well, you, you actually kind of answered my question, uh, Heather, about the curbside pickup or like a drive-through type, but it seems like uh, you were kind of answered earlier on. Um, no, I listen. I read this. I think this is a this is a great, safe, and well thought out plan. Um, I would have to think that it is in line with also the township and their uh, reopening of township. Uh, own buildings as well as the county yeah, so I, and I their did openings. Mr. Mayor on it. Yeah, he saw it. And also, um, we did have a discussion today of department heads about um, thermometer readings for the staff. Um, and Jim is going to be putting together some guidance from the township on what that's going to look like. So we'll follow his guidance from the township once that's released. That's just for the staff. Of course, I have no idea about the public. You know, in the future, if the government requires us to temperature check the public, we will have to then work out a procedure for that. I left room because I have no idea what's going to happen for that. Obviously, if they don't require it, it's not something we're going to be doing, I, I imagine. No, and, and again, this plan, I think it was, it, it, you know, a lot of work and thought went into this and it, you know, um, seclusion amongst our seniors are, it's a real, it's a real problem. Right. Um, and the fact that they would essentially be the first ones able to come in. Yes. And having our special hours, I think that's great because I think while a lot of the young kids and the school age children are suffering from not that interaction with their peers and everything like that, uh, the, se the seclusion among seniors is a very, uh, is a very concerning matter uh, countywide and statewide, or it should be at least statewide. Right. Um, so I I'm really, I'm really proud that, and I'm grateful that, um, that it really, it, it really takes to them first. Um, because I think they're the ones that are suffering the most from seclusion because right. of this I, I agree. pandemic. And you know, yeah, they're the ones that are usually home between the hours of nine and three so they can come to the library. Right. So It really um, kind of puts the kids on the back burner because we're not going to have their toys out there. They're not going to have kids' computers. Right. They're not going to be coming to story times. It's really just the drop. When the kids are allowed back in, it's just to come get books and go. And so we have, we'll have crafts for them to grab and go as well. We are planning on doing a virtual summer reading this summer. So we are going to have a summer reading. We're just retweaking it from the traditional summer reading because we're not going to be able to have the programs. Yeah. And, and I will say, I think the um, increased traffic of the libraries, Facebook and Instagram and social media uh, outlets, I think has been fantastic. And, you know, keep on First, going, go with yeah, it full Joyce speed Burke ahead. Been fantastic. She's doing a great uh, job. Plus you know, the whole the whole team feeds her information, so she just kind of gets everyone's ideas and puts it out there in one voice. So the, actually, everyone, um, even our story times for mm -hmm. children's are being being done by library assistants. They're doing online story times with Zoom and stuff for the kids. Oh, and it's great, and and the fact that they're sharing the township information that's being put out, whether it's by the mayor, the township committee, or the administrator. Uh, just more ways to get information out there. Right, we're uh, all partners in this. And and it's great, and the partnership is great. And um, does anyone have any questions on the health emergency library plan? Any other questions for Heather? Heather, have you reached out to the schools to see what the issue is with respect to summer reading? I know last yes, we have been actually our partnership has 
grown tenfold with the schools over all of this. Um, we are getting all their summer reading materials ready. We're putting together, so we've been ordering their books first. We've been putting together our PR plan because we know people won't be able to come in and browse for the material. So how we're gonna get these books out into the hands of the kids. So we've been working directly with the school media specialist. Um, we have been finding many avenues for kids to access books, either through electronic or, because a lot of times they, they weren't, they didn't have electronic access. So we also, we also under my, my direction decided to let kids really get cards over all this, even if they had fines and stuff, we kind of just waived everything for right now. So kids would have automatic access to anything that they needed. So we have worked very well with the schools and we've been doing a lot with them and we're very excited about our summer reading partnership with them. Just a quick question, um, Heather, I, I was looking, is there a certain number of people that will be allowed into the library at one time? I believe there is. I don't know what that number is going to be yet. So okay. um, I'm waiting for guidance. Like if the if if governor says, you know, cert, you know, half of what's allowed or whatever. So whatever right. the guidance comes from either the governor or from from the county or from our own town, um, we will we will put that in place. If there is no guidance set, we will set a probably very small number. And that's why when we first open, well, it's going to be appointments. And right. then, like they do at the grocery store, you know, you can come in now and since this person has left. Right, okay. And, um, quick question for you, it's Pat. Is there anything you want me to either go back to committee with or find out from them? Um, is there anything that I can help you with in that respect? Well, I do have a lot of open questions, but we're not there yet, Pat. I can go through and kind of highlight them. For example, once we do open to the public, I have no idea what the bathroom situation is going to be. I don't know what the guidelines are going to be. Right. So for right now, for phase two and 2.5 with um, bringing back the materials and allowing curbside, I think we're good with our, with our questions. Oh, that's a good first step. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But yeah, I'll go through and start kind of highlighting those that we will definitely have questions about. Okay. Thank okay. you. If there's no other questions on this plan, um, I will offer the motion to accept the Middletown Township Public Library Health Emergency Library Plan as submitted by Heather. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Mr. Buckle? Yes. Ms. Carillos? Yes. Ms. Schnell? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Rob, you're muted. No. Mr. Bucko, did Mr. Phelan reject said, the plan? He said no, yes, that was his vote, no. Okay. Mr. Van Ness? Yes. Mr. Ferry? Yes. Ms. Fox? Yes. Okay. Uh, next, uh, vote on the new logo. Bill, let me just ask one more question. Are you comfortable then, because there are no dates in this, are you comfortable with cur uh, delivery of the materials coming back next week and starting the curbside on June 8th? Uh, or do you still want to hold off on, on any of that? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for the whole board, but um, that would have been my... Okay. I know that the dates are open-ended because we do need guidance from the governor, right. which then I know we'll take guidance from, you know, then the, uh, you know, the county will get guidance from the governor as well as the township. So I, we would take our um, guidance if from the township. If anything changes dramatically, obviously I would, I would let the board know. Yeah, no, and, and, uh, and that's again, when I voted on this, it was my understanding that this is a- concern with this document is that, you know, we don't have 
official guidance from the governor and the township as to what's going to govern the opening and closing. And so I'm a little bit uncomfortable committing open-ended to a document. I think it's a good policy. I, you know, I look forward to you know, revisiting it at a future meeting and uh, perhaps adopting it. But I, you know, I'm not sure that we can, I, I'm uncomfortable. That's why I voted no as to it. I mean, I know. That it's, it's, I, I would think um, with all due respect that the township would be working closely with the library and any other public gathering place in terms of being very clear and specific on when they can open and how they can handle it. Maybe Jim can speak to that or Pat. Yes, absolutely, Susan. You're absolutely right. I think there will be much communication over the next 30 days because there's hopefully going to be a lot of things going on and movement being made. So I think the direct communication is going to be there with the town, um, which will come down through them from the governor. So I, I think right. it will be okay. And if for some reason something happens and it upsets the apple cart and we need to move the date, I think we can still do that if, if that is the case. So I, I, I think to sort of have a target is not a bad idea at this point, um, just so we can prepare and get ready. Um, but right. I throw it out to everyone else as well. I also, I also think, Heather, that you've created, a, I mean, it's an excellent policy, but as you said, when you preface the presentation of it, that this is a, a living document that will probably be changing and uh, adapting as we move forward. So, thank yes. you. Yes, and I wanted to give the staff something to take a look at so they have some guidance of where we're going as, as a library. And I also Great. think this good is job. good for morale for the, for the staff as well, even with uncertainty and, and, the, natu and the natural fear of coming into work, you know, in a public place, in a public building. I think having this in place and knowing that their employers are taking their health and well-being seriously, I think is also good for morale. So again, uh, kudos to you, Heather and Wendy, and, the, and I see Eileen is on this call as well on the meeting um, and to the rest of the work group. Uh, really congratulations. This was a really well thought out, very thorough piece and um, great thing to move forward with. Okay. Let me, let me just say, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Pat, go ahead. I just was going to say, I think it's also good for the morale of the residents. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, they are looking for things to get better. And if we can do it little by little in these small steps that we're taking here at the library, it just gives them a ray of hope that, you know, things are going to get better. And the library is, is such a, a focal point of the community. I think it's nice to see us um, showing the residents that we're trying to move along. So, you know, not only the staff, I agree that the staff needs it as well, but I think for the residents, it's just as important. Yeah, I agree. And let, let me also just say that throughout this entire process, Heather has been in contact with township administration. Yes. You know, the decision to close the library was taken in consultation with, with Mr. Mercantante. Uh, th this whole plan, we've been meeting uh, as all department heads, we've been meeting three times weekly throughout this. And Heather has, we've been discussing library reopening inch by inch throughout this whole time. So there, yeah, this is not something that Heather has just dreamed up. I mean, she put the plan, she put the plan together. But I mean, this is all being done in consultation with the town, which in turn is following the county and, and the state guidelines. And Jim, can you tell us, is the county and town, are they offering, you know, revised hours? I mean, that was one of the things that leaked out to me, was that- The town, the, the town will be going to revised hours beginning June the 1st. Right. I, but I, I understand that they're revising their hours, but are they limiting? I mean, in phase three of this document, you know, I see that there's, you know, senior compromised hours for 9.30 to 11 o'clock. And yes. then have caregiver children hours from 11 to two o'clock and regular patron hours from two to five o'clock. And I'm just well, concerned- A couple things about that. Yes, the, the town is doing limited hours beginning June the 1st. But I also think that the library is a little different than township buildings uh, in that, you know, people are coming in for specific purposes and we're gonna get them in and out, which is why we're, we're adjusting our hours. Uh, the library, everybody comes in at different times and wants to congregate together. So I think 
Heather's plan to keep people kind of segregated is, is also a good one. But again, this is something that can be revised. Absolutely. You know, if two weeks from now things are opened up, you know, much better, we can, we can always move to, you know, later stages. Right. Well, and that's my concern is that you know, adopting this as a formal policy is that you know, we'll have to vote on it each time. I mean, I'd be more comfortable getting guidance from the township and the county as to what they're doing rather than adopting this and having a hard line policy of saying, you know, oh, senior citizens can only come in from 9.30 to 11 o'clock and you're, you're excluded from those times. And, you know, some taxpayer says, you know, I, you know I'm, I work during the rest of the time I want to come in from 9.30 to 11 o'clock. Are we legally able to exclude them? And, you know, under this policy that's being proposed, we would seem that being, being able to do that. And I'm just not sure that we can do that without guidance from township, county, and state as of yet. So I, I, I do like this, and I appreciate that a lot of hard work and thoughts go into it. I'm just thinking that this may be premature for us as the board to adopt as a formal policy for the library at this juncture. And Rob, I understand mm -hmm. that. And I, I am happy to, like I said, just implement the two stages right now. And certainly, once we get more guidance, I'm happy to write the additional phases as we go. Um, that That is not a problem for me and the staff. I just wanted to have, and I don't even have to, it's necessarily, it could be a procedure and not necessarily a policy. So it's a guideline right now. Yeah, I think it's more of a guideline. So um, if, if that, you know, we can certainly, this is going to, we can bring it out at every meeting and take a look at it. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd feel more comfortable if it was something not a, you know, a policy formally adopted by the by the board. You know, this is a, a guideline that you're following in conjunction with the township administration. Respectfully, the motion passed. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. Um, all right. I just no, and you know, Rob brings up a lot of good points, and um, excuse me, but I think because we are all in uncharted territories right now. Um, you know, everyone's kind of doing this as we go along because of the uncertainty and because of some of the conflicting uh, information coming from Trenton or, you know, Washington or whatever. So, um, but uh, given that Thanks it had passed that we will, um, I think we, I think, so we're not continuing to, you know, belay the point. Um, if we move on to the next item under new business, which is the vote on the new logo. Um, I'm sorry, Susan, did you want to say something? Just wanted to point out, it says plan. Mm -hmm. It's a plan. So to me, that's a, that's an, you know, it's an actual item that has been delineated for us. So we understand what Heather and her team are planning to do in, in concordance with the township which of course will be coming down from the governor's office through the county. So um, it seems to me like this is something that could be implemented and adjusted as we need to. And I'm not sure, maybe uh, Mr. McCumber can, can advise us whether we would actually need to vote on every change if it's something that's coming from the township as a directive. Respectfully, I think your point's extremely well taken. It's a plan. We're not adopting this for the next 10 years. We're in an emergency situation. A lot of thought has gone into this. It's a reasonable plan. Um, if we ever have to defend it, by the time we have to defend it, probably it will have changed. So I, you know, I, I, it's a good first step and we have a good executive director who's gonna implement it and uh, she can loosen it or tighten it as the township and the county and the governor suggest or demand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, new logo. I took together, um, of course, this is, these are drafts. So if these still don't work, we will go back to the drawing board. I want to get it right. Um, what you're seeing is not from a great printer. Obviously, it's going to be cleaner. And we're going to make sure that the Native American on the book is the actual Native American uh, logo that the town is using. This was not, Tara pointed out to me. Um, so this is some of your suggestions. This is, this is the direction we went in. So I'd like to hear some feedback. 
Well, my four-year-old son likes this one, so this is my vote. Okay. <laughs> he he did, he says I like this one, Daddy, and he did the check mark. So I'm compelled to vote for this one. An ad hoc member. <laughs> it just the the difference is the coloring there. Is it a yes. gray, grayish color? Gray. Yes, we added the gray because we're kind one's of gray, gray and the other one's white. Okay, so yeah, we were kind of going with more of a bluish gray color tones. That's why. Got it. Okay. And this doesn't have to be adopted tonight. It's not urgent. So you know, I would I would like. I don't know if anybody was around when we did the uh, the last logo, but this looks very similar to one of the ones that um, was created previously. Uh, in the uh, when we had our this contest this looks whichever one it doesn't matter uh this looks very similar to the, one of the ones I mean, it doesn't matter to me but one of the ones that was previously created and, and it could be we, we could have took some direction from some of the stuff that we've seen around i also wanted to get i my idea was to kind of brand us more with the town um and i felt that the logo that we currently have doesn't necessarily say Middletown on it to me. That's why we went back in this direction a little bit. Heather, it's Rob. That's fine, but what I'm looking at, it says Middletown Public Library right at the top of it, the previous, like the other one that was created. I'm not, I'm just saying. I, yes, it does, it does. But I, I, I thought from a branding standpoint, if someone wasn't familiar with our logos, if they saw this, they, they kind of know that's Middletown's logo, like if they're from Middletown. From a branding standpoint, don't, shouldn't there be three levels of a logo, a giant, and then moving it down to, to where it's one low, like. I, I, sure, I, I would love some feedback on it. Um, like I said. Uh, Typically when it's a, a, a lo like I don't care, I just, I think this is, it's this not speaking this is just you. my opinion. Um, branding a logo should be very recognizable and it should be able to be broken down into three separate categories. One for, you know, one for letterhead, one for maybe a t-shirt, like there, okay. but it's, I, I feel like it all should tie into one. Like if somebody saw that, they know, oh, that's Middletown Library. Um, I don't know. That's just uh, that's no, just my, I, I appreciate my two the thoughts. At I'm, I'm not an expert in this, so I definitely appreciate the feedback. So we can certainly, you know, look into it a little bit more as well. That's why I'm asking for some direction. What what is? Uh, I, I don't know that I would recognize even our township logo. I hate to say that, but is that the one you're using? You're making this. You're using yes. theirs. And the township logo is pretty similar. It is, yes. The colors are the same. Uh, Jim, help me out. The township is black. I think the township is black, but maybe Heather, um, okay. you know, you got some hmm. feedback, um, and maybe I, I tweak also, it. I, I, Heather, I, 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 it's, this is, you know, I'm not comfortable voting on this. This looks like a little preliminary to me. I mean, I think that the, you know, we have some, you know borders which haven't been done professionally. Right, no, I know that. We're all, we're all working from home with different, well, with different I, centers. And, you know, but the, I believe also the, 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 the technical term is kerning, which is the spacing between the letters. Okay. You know, to me, this looks like it's kind of like stretched. It just seems like, you know, that somebody did it in Microsoft Word and pulled it and stretched it out. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not encouraging us to go out and, you know, spend you know hire an advertising company to develop this but this to me doesn't look very you know professional in terms of that, okay the, the the color i'm fine with it and look i i like the idea it's the you know middletown logo on a book so to me i recognize it as the middletown library uh i'm just not comfortable with the, the font and uh the you know i'd like it to be completed before we see the full version um I agree with that. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? It's Pat. Yeah. Um, Jess and Tara in the PIO's office are extremely talented, especially Jess when it comes to things like this. 
Um, I, have you reached out to either one of them? I, I have, Pat. Um, they, they've been a little busy right now, and okay. I did tell them that this is not urgent, okay. so they are aware of it. Um, okay. And I think once things settle down, they might have a little bit more time to, to help us develop this a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sure they will. They're, um, they're very good at doing things like this, so it may be a good resource for you. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe what Heather, I would do then once things yeah. settle down with Pat. We're okay with the color blue at least. So the blue yeah. kind of we can build off of that a little bit. I, I build off of that, and I think maybe just better for us to also see the township's logo as well, just okay. for next time, just something to reference. Uh, to Susan's point, you know, I'm not even sure sometimes I even. Oh, there you go. And, and I like. The, oh yeah, right now I recognize it. Yeah, of course, <laughs> now I see it, and I agree with the committee woman. You know, to use the staff, uh, the team over there with Tara and Jess, and maybe they'll come back with something. Uh, I'm even open to other colors. You know, okay. if they have other thoughts. So let's live wild. <laughs> Lindsay, I think you had a, some more feedback as well. Uh, I'm done. It's fine. Heather Dick Macumber. The only, the only thing is lawyers shouldn't design, design logos. <laughs> when I look at the township, one of the things it says is New Jersey. Okay. We have a Middletown, Connecticut, a Middletown, New York, and a Middletown, Pennsylvania. Okay. You might think about it, but that's... That's an excellent point. It's a suggestion. And if you look at the townships, they, they put New Jersey in there. So it's right. just... Yeah. Okay. You don't want to make point. it small. Maybe you put the New Jersey under in the next band under Middle Downtown Township Public Library and just, and the next band says New Jersey. Is it okay. Still, not a design. I'm going to come back for some, maybe some more ideas for, for June for more drafts to look at then. Thank you. Um, Heather, are you just have on here right now the discussion of the annual report. Are you looking for us to, I'm just looking in interest of time. It's actually uh, just for you to have. Just for have, uh, just for an interest of time, given that uh, probably some of us <laughs> have been on uh, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx uh, virtual conference calls all day. Um, just for the interest of, I'm just looking at the time, uh, you know, waiting for the announcement of the library to go off in about five minutes saying, you know, closes in 15. <laughs> um, I just wanted you to have the annual report, that's all. Um, just so you could have it to see where we are, see where we're going. Do we have to formally vote on this since it says vote new logo? I don't. Uh, not on the, well, the logo we're not voting, we're tabling until more drafts okay. are coming up. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Pop Baca? Yes. I just had one question because I'm, I'm in the office, so I'm typing the resolutions and changing them. And I just was looking at the minutes and um, um, since Mr. Ferry, and it may be something that Mr. McCumba has to answer, um, since Mr. Ferry was not here at the February meeting making him pro temp, would that be a conflict for him to sign minutes and approve minutes that he was not here for? I think your point no is- problem. I have no problems coming in and signing anything. All right, so why don't we uh, point Lindsay just to sign the February minutes or whatever. Two, two pro temp se secretaries for tonight? Sure, why not? Let's go wild. <laughs> <There Okay>. Right. <laughs> the fact that my kids have been quiet for about 90 minutes and I haven't heard bloody murder screams, it's uh, usually, if anything can happen. That usually a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we have now come to the public session of the agenda. The board encourages public participation. Individuals wishing to address the board shall be recognized by the presiding officer and shall give their names, addresses, and the group, if any, that they represent. Each speaker is asked to speak no longer than five minutes and limit their remarks to items on the meeting agenda. The board may use their discretion on whether to respond or not to questions during the public participation portion. Um, we I'm, did I'm muting our participants who, from the public in case they would like to join us. Just give me one second. 
Yes. Um, have there, uh, just for the board's, uh, the rest of the board's knowledge, in the announcement of our virtual meeting, uh, we, the library did set up a uh, special email account uh, for if there were any members of the public that wished to submit written questions. Uh, Heather or Wendy, did we get any questions into that email? We did I not. think Heather um, was receiving the questions. And okay. we did and, not. No, okay. Um, any sorry, member of the public? Uh, I'm trying to unmute them. If, if anyone from the public would like to speak, um, if, you, if you'd like to unmute, your, try unmuting your, yourself since I'm not. You can try to type into the chat as well. I want to just unmute everyone. I'm trying to unmute and it's not allowing me to. Here, let me try this. Okay, everyone should be unmuted. Yeah, everyone's unmuted. Okay, is there anyone in the public that wish to make a comment on Okay, seeing that there is none, um, for the good of the order. Uh, there again, I just would like to, um, again, express my gratitude uh, to you, Heather, uh, and to the entire staff of the library for really coming together and uh, uh, during this pandemic, um, working in consultation um, with the township uh, to ensure not only the health and safety of the employees, but also the health and safety of our residents. Um, I know it's a lot of uncharted territories right now. Uh, this is something that we really haven't had to deal with, but uh, your steady leadership and um, really um, has made um, what's a very challenging time for our community um, easier. Um, so I'd just like to credit you, uh, Wendy, Margaret, and the rest of the entire staff uh, for their dedication, for thinking outside the box, for being finding new ways to still try to be connected to the community as much as possible via, you know, virtually, or whether it's through social media or whether it's through whatever it can be. So again, kudos to you and to everyone else. Um, I do look forward to the day that we're back in the library hosting these meetings. Um, you know, but there again, um, just thank you again for, for what you have done. And, uh, you know, please pass, and Wendy, you as well, and please pass it also on to Margaret and the rest of the staff. Uh, on behalf of myself and the entire board, uh, we do really appreciate um, the work that you have done and continue to do. and. Uh, the thoughtfulness of looking forward as well and not just dealing with the current time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you maybe want, I'll just go through who's on my grid here next. Pat? Yeah, hi. <laughs> um, I'm good. Um, I think everything is working well. I think the community is gonna be pleased and um, Heather, Bill, if there's anything I can relate or translate from the Township Committee, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Susan? Yes, I just, um, I wanted to reiterate uh, what you just said, um, Chairman, and really great work, Heather, Wendy, uh, Margaret, and the whole team on all the work that you've been doing. Uh, from the shields, the masks that you've been, uh, that you created. Yeah, that was, that was Three, a fun project. 300 of those. Wow, that's amazing. And then also announcing the um, $5,000 matching grant from um, National Endowment for the Arts. That's 
fabulous. Yes. Really great. And I know you got some great press out of that, but um, really super, super work in a short amount of time and under uh, extremely difficult circumstances. So congratulations and thank you. Keep up the thank great you. work. Rob? Thanks, Heather. Be well, stay healthy. Thanks, you too. Uh, Matt? Uh, this is my first meeting, so <laughs> nice to meet everybody. Um, it was supposed to be a while back, but then we had these interesting times. So New Mammoth is right up the street from the library. We have a great relationship. We send our kindergarten there all the time. Um, so I look forward to helping out in any way I can in um, that little bond between our schools and the library. So thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay? Thank you for everything and stay healthy, safe. Thank you, you too. Jim? Uh, welcome to, uh, to Mr. Ferry. We look forward to meeting you in person. Um, and I, I, to echo yeah, what everybody has said, um, Heather, it's been an interesting first not eight months now. <laughs> So far, we've had quite a quite a ride so far. I just hope this isn't indicative of the entirety of your tenure with us. Oh my! <laughs> Everybody, stay healthy. Have a good night. Thank you. And on that, I will offer a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great uh, night. Be well. Yes. Be safe. And Thank you. Uh, we will see you, see you on June second. Okay. Yes. Bye, everybody. Thank Stay you. well. Bye -bye.